Good evening, God, to the Baptist Church. Today I have an inspirational message for you. What makes a true friend? that you're typically not comfortable in. That's a true friend. So, many years ago, back in the 80s, I had a friend. And he, well, I wasn't born yet, but he is one of my employees today. One of my employees told me that he had a friend that was living at his mother's house. And when his mom threw him out on the street, he had nowhere to go. And he was thrown out on the street at the age of 15 and taken in by the foster care system. So what does that tell you? That obviously should tell you that he really got nowhere to go. And as soon as he turned 18, he was moved 20 times. And as soon as he turned 18, they threw him out on the street again. So this time, he went and he rented a room from his friend. While he was living with his friend, he actually went and worked at a McDonald's. The whole time he's working at McDonald's, he saved his money and got promoted several times. He used that money to go from renting his friend's room to actually purchasing a house. Purchasing a house. So you see, his friend was really the most important step because what if he had been living out, out, out onto the street? He could have gotten ill. He could have gotten killed, he could have gotten anything, and not be able to go for the job. So, his friend was the most important step in the whole journey. The second point I have for you is a true friend will encourage you to endure. Somebody say amen. By what do I mean when I say encourage you to endure? Here's what I mean when I say encourage you to endure. By that, I mean they would not see you with a problem or see you getting fired from your job and just say, oh, well, Serves you right, you shouldn't have done this. What if I was letting somebody go because of a crime they committed on campus? Their friend would say, well, you can come work with me, or whatever you need, I'll be here for you. If you lose your house, you can come stay with me. They would encourage you to endure. Because it's one thing to come, and they put me in a hole. When you come, you come, that's like the police come, the ambulance or the fire department coming and teasing you because you accidentally set your house on fire. Fire department just pulls up and says, oh, look, look at that idiot, he accidentally set his house on fire. 
That's exactly what that would be if they don't encourage you to endure. Therefore, not your true friend. Remember that. Always remember that. The next and the last point is your friend, true friend is not envious of your exaltment. What do I mean when I say, when I say they're not envious of your exaltment? What I mean when I say they're not envious of your exaltment is they will not see you get new shoes, new purse, new house, new car, and say that they're jealous of you. They will not be jealous of you. They will say, what have you done to get this? I would like to do the same thing. Or they would be proud of you. They would see you win a competition and then curse you to the ground. They would say, congratulations. Hey, somebody say amen. They would not be envious of your exaltment. And you know what? That why, why should they be envious of your exaltment? If they are really your friends. You know when you find who and who isn't your true friend at the lowest times of your life and at the highest time of your life. If they can't handle what God did for you, they're not your true friend. And if they can't see you in a hole and still be your friend, they're also not your true friend. Amen? Somebody say amen. 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 Now. Thank you. Now, for closing. Father, in the name of Jesus, please help us to recognize our true friends and help us be a blessing on offers over the course of this week. May God bless us and may the word that we learn be a blessing. Lord, I want to thank you for everything you've done. In the name of Jesus, amen.